Welcome back, Captains. This is Admiral Yachtus Tafark with Starfleet Special Command. We are here today with video 4 in our shipbuild series, my fleet reconnaissance science vessel, the USS Altair. I know you guys are thinking, really, Tafark, a science vessel? Well, this video is to show that a science vessel is a viable option in PvE and Elite STS. As we've done in previous videos, I'll be breaking them down into 8 parts, so let's get started. Alright guys, first off we're going to go over the shipbuild itself. And like I said, this is a fleet reconnaissance size vessel. I'm going to start right here with the weapons. Four weapons. We've got the fleet advanced phaser beam rays, damage times two, accuracy times two. Fleet advanced quantum torpedoes, Mark 12, damage times three, accuracy. The rear, we got the matching fleet phaser beam rays, mark 12, damage times 2, accuracy times 2. And the Borg kinetic cutting beam from the Omega reputation. Alright, for the three piece set for the shields, impulse, and deflector, I'm running the adapted Mako mark 12. Impulse, Adapted Mako, and the Deflector, Adapted Mako. Uh, warp Core, uh, right now, I haven't gotten one of the fleet ones yet for this ship, but uh, right now I'm running the uh, EPS weapon to auxiliary. Uh, main reason for that is the EPS, I have been switching between some of my powers. It actually helps out a little bit with the uh, power transfer between your systems. Uh, the weapons to auxiliary, the WA in the middle, um, gives that, um, the, adds a 7.5% of your weapon power to your auxiliary power. And what that does is, if you look down here at my powers, it actually gives quite a bit of overhead on the auxiliary. It lets you run it a little bit low, and you'll see why that's going to become important later on. Move on to the devices, running the subspace field modulator weapons batteries and auxiliary batteries engineering consoles running the universal assimilated module and that with the connect cutting beam gets you your two piece the omega weapon amplifier get you all that good stuff right there and I'm running a Mark 10. Uh, it's a neutronium alloy. It's the one of the new fleet ones from the uh, dilithium mine. It actually adds plus turn, so instead, instead of just the 18.8, .8, it also gives you the 18.8 .8 in flight turn rate, and which actually helps out quite a bit. Um, dual, con it's a like, kind of universal console. It gives you two things of both. And with it being a Mark 10, it's actually equivalent to a Mark 11, I do believe, in a standard neutronium. So you actually get an extra little bit on it. Uh, the next on the science consoles uh, is the plasmonic leech. Um, that actually comes into play if you look back down here at the power levels. Um, once you get into combat, the power levels are going to start raising up due to the, the leech. Um, it will pretty much max out the auxiliary. Uh, it's already right now static at 94. Um, it'll most of the times what I've seen it's already at 100 if not over 100. And the weapons 109, the leech will actually bump that on up a little bit also. But with other things in the build you'll see, which I'll talk about this again, again later, about what these will end up being once you get into combat. All right, the next two things I've been kind of swapping in and out, just try playing with them, trying to figure out which one's actually working better. Um, I did pick up one of the embassy consoles. Uh, it's the emitter array, which actually gives you your plus 30 to star starship shield emitters, which improves the shield healing. Shield healing. But it also, this is actually the minus threat console. There is a plus threat and a minus threat. And what that does is increase, decreases your, de increases or decreases your threat generation by 60% while active. And then it also, if you were running plasma weapons, it would give you the plus 9%. But 
even if you don't have plasma weapons, it's actually going to add the 2.5% chance proc for plasma damage, as well, which is the plasma fires. Um, from what I've seen, it's nice having the emitter rays on this particular ship. Uh, as I get into my other build series, updating my first three ships, um, you'll see where this is going to come into play a little bit more. But for this ship right now, this seems to probably be the best layout. Um, depending on how you fly, you may want to add the second field generator. But if you look right now at defenses, with the way it's setting up now, I'm already at almost 18,000 shields. Um, so if you add that second, uh, another field generator, it's going to put it up close to 19, somewhere in the high 18 to 19, somewhere along in there. Um, I've a hat, I have run it with two of the emitter rays, but I can't really, I believe I get, get more out of the field generator here than I do having the two emitter rays on this particular build. And then on the tactical consoles down here on the bottom, you see that we've got Mark 11, very rare phaser relays, four of them. Um, early on when I was playing with this build, um, I actually had stuck in some uh, torp consoles just trying to see if uh, how it was going to work with the adaptive Mako. Uh, if you actually look at the adaptive Mako, this is kind of what I was going for with this ship build. Um, you come down, where is it at? Uh, tactical right there. It's this two set bonus. Gives you the 25% bonus to torpedo damage. I was kind of kind of going for a torpedo clap slash beam boat, but uh, it didn't really work out. I was I actually get more DPS with the phaser beam rays. I actually ran it as a it had two torps up here and one beam array, but it got to be to where running beams forward and aft, you kind of have to broadside with this. Um, so it's it really wasn't that great, but adding that extra 25% bonus torpedo damage. Um, when you get this ship into an STF and get the running around with it, it actually makes uh, a big difference. And that's where the RCS console added to the neutronium comes into play because it actually gives you that quick turn rate. You can just keep an eye on your uh, torpedo timer, fly in, hit it broadside with the beams, and then as soon as you see that you're able to hit your uh, torpedo spread, you just cut in real quick and it turns real quick which I'll show you that here in a few minutes. Um, turn in, pop your torpedoes, and then come right back to broadside and keep on firing, firing the beams. Um, that 25% torpedo damage actually helped out quite a bit. All right. All right, let's move on from here. We can go uh, to my captain's skills. Uh, this is the same skill set that I have had on all my other ship build series. Uh, this actually comes from the Hilbert Guide, it's straight from thehilbertguide.com. It's the exact same thing, like I said on my previous videos. Uh, going to my captain's traits, which these have again these have not changed since my last video. Alright, go over here to the bridge officers. Show what kind of skills I've got on these guys. Uh, for the Lieutenant Tactical, running a Torpedo Spread 1 and the Beam Ray Fire at Will 2. Um, with the Ensign Tactical, I'm running a Tactical Team. Um, I've moved these around quite a bit trying to figure out which one's going to be the best and I just do not like running a ship without Tactical Team. It just doesn't seem like it stays together quite as bit. Um, I did actually run the beam fire at will. I did it in a one and then ran it with attack pattern beta like I did my aux auxiliary to battery build. Um, it worked out good but having the torpedo spread actually works out more with the DPS than not having the torpedo spread. So I just kind of wanted to go with go this route with it. You can do that and get drop the torpedo spray so you can add the attack pattern beta back um, your DPS may suffer my suggestion if you're going to do that is not build this build and try to do it a little bit different maybe go uh, if you were to go back over to here instead of using the adapted um, Mako's probably go with the 
full bulwark with a Mako shield or just the full bulwark uh, set. And then don't don't worry about the torpedoes at all and just do a solid beam boat. But like I said, I wanted to try out these new adapted Makos. They were new to me, so I wanted to try those out, see how that torpedo damage works, and it seemed like it helped out pretty good. Um, down on the Lieutenant Engineering Station, I'm running an Emergency Power to Shields 1 and the Emergency Power to Weapons 2. Um, with This all kind of goes back into what I was talking about with the uh, power levels down here. With these two Emergency Power to Shields, Emergency Power to Weapons, and the Plasmodic Leech, all of that coming into play down here, pretty much everything but engines stays maxed out while you're in combat. It does not move it stays exactly where uh, there's a couple times that the um, beams will drop the weapon power down that's why I got the auxiliary batteries I just kinda as you're flying around just keep I keep glancing at it if I see that it's falling down I'll go ahead and pop a battery and usually that's going to be in between the rotations of these two going on and off together so they'll sit there and cycle back and forth and when it, you hit the shield, your shield heal goes up. This is probably going to start creeping down because of the beams. I'll go ahead and pop that. Um, most of the time, to be honest, the STF, I did the in fact, the conduit I just ran, I didn't even use one of those batteries. So that may be something that I need to start paying more attention to, trying to keep that weapon power up. I might get a little more out of it. Um, now, the interesting part of this build is the <coughs> science characters, uh, science bridge officers. I kind of wanted to go with a crowd control kind of build with this ship. That's the reason for the torpedo spread and the and the beam fire at wills. Um, I'm actually running, starting here, running the uh, hazard emitters one, transfer shield strength two, and this also goes into play with the auxiliary because those two abilities come move and um, you actually use the power off your auxiliary. And if you see your auxiliary go down, you can actually pop an auxiliary battery. Uh, the next two things, which is Tykin's Rift and Gravity Well. Uh, if you run a lot of the elite STFs, um, especially like uh, Infected the Conduit, you're going to run into the you know the massive wave of Borg spheres that come flying at you when you start taking down gates. Um, Gravity Well and a Tykin's Rift on those guys pretty much stops them with this setup. Um, with the auxiliary maxed all the way open and um, with some with some skilling in the uh, Graviton amplifiers I believe is what does those. Um, those are fairly potent. Um, usually what I do uh, when you pop a Gravity Well it's going to put your Tykin's Rift on uh, cool down. I can't remember exactly how. It's not very long at all. It may be 15, 10, 15 seconds. Um, what I'll do is as the spheres come in, pop the Tykin, I mean the gravity well, and then just keep an eye on them. And this whole time you're firing beam fire at will. You're firing your torque spreads at them. And as soon as that Tykin's Rift comes available, hit them with that, and that'll pretty much finish them off. Um, especially with you sitting there, and if another player picks up firing on them, they're not going to even get close to the gate. Uh, the last mission I ran was, it was re really fun and that's just one of the neat things about this build right here um, on to the next the lieutenant commander position I got a polarized hole that takes care of if you get in tractor beamed I'm running another hazard emitters too um, I'm, I could probably stick something else there I know the there's a lot more science abilities that could be put in that spot but the reason I'm doing this is being up close and personal with a lot of these, a lot of the cubes, a lot of the gates, you tend to take a lot of damage. You're going to take a lot of damage, and you're going to be drawing aggro. That's made one of the reasons for running one of the threat-reducing consoles. And with you taking a lot of damage, you're going to have to heal. Um, so what I've been doing, I've been running the hazard emitters too, and the transfer shield strength. I'll run those. Though I consider those my heals, and the other hazard emitter. I consider that heals for teammates. Um, do I use these for me all the time? No, I try to heal you know my teammates as much as I can. But like I said, you're flying a, a tactical science ship. You're going to be up close and personal with these things. You're going to be taking a lot of damage. You need to worry about yourself first. And then if you got a spare heal, you can throw out. And then you can throw it out. Um, I most of the time, if you get really low on shields, really low on health, um, pop a 
auxiliary battery hit both of those at the same time and you're pretty much gonna go from being you can I've gone from completely you know down in the 20s in the health no hardly any shields left to just a couple seconds of popping these and you're pretty much right back up to full strength um, usually what I'll do is I'll hit an emergency evasive get out of it you know start moving away pop my battery hit those two things and by the time I turn back around and start hitting like my uh, attack pattern alpha you know hit starting to get my uh, buff cycles back up by the time I turn back around and start heading back I'm already at full health again and you're ready to go again alright move on from uh, our bridge officers go ahead and uh, we'll hit the duty officers next Alright, there's a couple different ways you can run your space duty officers. Um, since I was kind of going heavy on the torpedoes on this thing, I'm running the four purple uh, projectile weapons officers, which reduces the recharge time. Um, it's pretty sick being able to sit there and fire torpedo spreads. Just to, you're not firing them, you know, one after another, but it's getting pretty close. It'll you'll send out a spread. It'll go a couple seconds. You'll send out a single. You'll send out a spread, single spread, single. And it'll kind of bounce back and forth. Um, running the con officer uh, that reduces the recharge time for your attack team and attack team is very important um, especially when you get to taking all those hits on one shield facing you can hit that attack team um, and pop that transfer shield strength and I mean it just brings everything right back uh, the next one's going to be the damage control engineer um, that's reducing the recharge time for your emergency power to subsystem mobilities that's running right here with your uh, emergency power to shields and your emergency power to weapons um, some of the things that I've played with on this build um, I pretty much say that these top four are going to be a must and uh, I really, if I could have a six slot instead of just the five I would probably come down here and grab one of the let me see if I can find there, the, one of the deflector officers. Um, I did take both of these out and run the deflector officers there. Um, the times did, you know, did it help with the times on the recharge times on like the Titan's Rift and things like that? Yes, it did. Um, but your DPS is going to suffer. You'll get to pop more of these and help crowd control more, but your DPS is going to suffer. So that's why I knocked these two out. Um, if if I had to pick between these two, I would probably knock the con officer out and add one of those in if y'all wanted to go that route with it but there's the five guys for my space uh, duty officers go ahead exit that go on to the reputation level all right since uh, my last videos I have come a long way with my reputation um, I'm just about finished with um, all of them um, not quite finished, but uh, the Task Force Omega, I am already, I just finished up Tier 5 on that. That's how I got access to the Mark 12 uh, three-piece sets, the adaptive maker set that I'm running on here. Um, I did respec my captain. I come up with some extra Zen and went ahead and respect. I don't exactly remember what I had before, but uh, basically what I have now have the Omega Weapon Proficiency, Omega Weapon Training, Regenerative Shield Augmentation, Omega Graviton Amplifier, and Medical Nanite Cloud. Right. On the Nukera, running the uh, Indomitable enhanced shield penetration and haven't got any of the rest of these yet and Romulus running enhanced personal shields precision for the critical hit chance reactive shielding and emergency secondary shielding and then I'll be going with the quantum singularity manipulation when it comes available alright guys uh, we're going to move on to the uh, key binds that I've set up and the order that I've set them up in this is one thing I want to show y'all 
these things just every time I change maps these things keep popping up on there I don't know why it's doing this gotta be a bug or something but uh, this is what I'm running right now this is how it's set up um, on the first tier I just keep my ship stuff down here the quantum slip stream evasive maneuvers and your full impulse see abandoned ship that's another one that it's added in there and then I've got my weapons here I'm, I've always done that uh, one thing you can do which I probably will start doing on this ship is uh, pull them out of there and bring over all the science abilities and line them up in a line that way you're not coming over here you know moving that mouse back and forth um, that's the way it loaded it when I st first started the ship so I just I left them there uh, but that's probably what I, I'll start doing is bringing over all the science abilities putting the hazard missiles beside each other transfer shield strength and then lay out your uh, your Titan's Rift, Gravity Well, and then your Viral Matrix. On my second one is where I put all my tactical abilities, all my tactical buffs. Uh, this is the mask energy field that comes with the three-piece set from the Adaptive Mako shield. And tactical fleet, tactical initiative, fire my mark, go down fighting, brace for impact and the attack pattern alpha and then my two batteries all right number seven is what if you like I said if y'all go to the Hilbert guide and set up his key binds that he does he actually uses the number seven and this is the order I use them in um, if you do the weapons first that's going to give you a more weapon focus it's going to hit give you weapons first it's going to buff your weapons first if you do the shield first the emergency power shields it's going to buff your shields first um, I tend to like going weapon heavy um, but if you get to where you feel like you know you feel kind of squishy you want to add some extra shields to it you can swap those and go shields first that's just the way I tend to do it um, the next is going to be your uh, beam Array, fire at will too, and then your torpedo spread. And I stick the subspace field modulator on there just for giggles. I mean, I can stick it right here. Um, there's two ways you can do it. You can either stick it in there and let the uh, the keybind activate it. And the only thing, it's got a three minute cooldown. So when you do do it, uh, just be aware that you're not going to, if you put it in here, it's going to take every three minutes for it to activate. And if you have to need it because of the uh, resistance uh, 34 all damage resistance rating for 15 seconds you know if you get run into attack cube or any one of the cubes and you start taking aggro um, that could be very nice to have in this position to where you can hit that hit brace for impact and give you some resistance to, instead of popping you can or in blowing up you can actually may live through it but like on my previous videos, like I've said before, guys, all you gotta do is just come in. Once you get the keybind set up, um, I'll annotate the uh, Hilbert guide again. Um, just come in, you start hitting there, you start hitting your space bar, and then every you just you just gotta. That's the reason I kept it up here. Is you just keep an eye on it as things start getting low. Six, five, four. Here you're getting ready to do your shields. Start hitting your space bar. It activates everything. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about real quick is going to be the events combat tracker parse log. Um, like I said, I just ran a parse from uh, Infected the Conduit not too long before I recorded this video. Um, I'll go ahead and, and post that for you guys. Uh, I'm actually going to post uh, three separate slides for the uh, parse log for events combat tracker. Uh, the first one I'm going to show is actually for, not from the Infected uh, the Conduit. It's actually from Kittimer Vortex. Um, it included all the damage from the time it started up until you fight Denatra. Um, once you start running across the whole map to get to Denatra and start fighting here, your DPS just it just falls right off. So it really doesn't show what it can do for sustained. Um, I'm going to show that one first and then the next slide I'm going to actually show the one I just ran which was Infected the Conduit. It's going to show that just the very first page like y'all have been seeing on the videos. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, actually I'm going to start doing this for any more videos I do from now on. Um, the third 
slide is actually going to be a detailed breakdown from the advanced combat tracker parse log. It's actually, you can actually break it down even further than what y'all have been seeing. You can actually see what weapons I'm using, what abilities I'm using, how much they're actually contributing to the total DPS number and so forth. That way, if anybody looks at it, they can say, I didn't, I, I did those numbers on an S-Cord. No, this actually came from uh, the, the science shit that I did it on. But, well, there it is, the USS Altair. Uh, like I said, this is the fleet version of the reconnaissance science vessel. Uh, when you get the fleet version, you actually get this. This is pretty much all. Uh, I think it's called Comet. It's the Comet skin. Uh, the, this is everything on here is Comet except for these pylons. I can't I remember what it came off of, but as y'all have noticed, that pretty much every time I get a ship, I do not leave it stock. I always change it to suit my my likes and my tastes. And the only thing I don't like is this big rhinoceros looking horn thing on it. But it's got a kind of looking at the little red dot. It looks like it's got a phaser bank in it. So maybe it's a strong phaser bank. But anyway guys, there she is. The USS Altair. Again, if y'all have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, requests for videos, you can contact me in game. Yachtus to Fark at Yachtus to Fark. Y'all have a good couple days. I'll see you on the next video. Yachts to fart. Out.